All right, so it's the top of the hour here, and I want to welcome you action coach business coaches um, and marketing folks to our webinar today with 24 by 7 disk assessment, um, the series, and we will be starting today with the topic of the five core assessments that are available to you with uh, assessments 24 by 7. We have Jennifer as our host. She is the Director of Instruction Design and Certification. So this webinar is being recorded, so uh, you'll be able to access the replay um, from an email that is going to be sent to you via GoToWebinar. Uh, so look for that, and we will also be posting this up into the dashboard. Again, this is Eve Fabros for Angie Fairbanks, and I will go ahead and turn it over to Jennifer. Thank you so much, Eve. Can you hear me and see my screen? Yes, I can. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm excited to be able to spend some time talking about our core assessments. I know that everyone is quite familiar with our DISC assessments and that we have found a lot of um, value in sharing them and that there's a lot of wonderful things that come from being able to use the DISC assessments. My hope today is that not only can we review a little bit about the DISC, but also bring into your understanding and awareness the other core assessments that we offer, and that I can show you how they interact with the DISC assessment to create an even more robust, comprehensive, and powerful experience. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce each of the assessments, and then I'll take a bit of time and talk about each of them in a high-level overview, and then talk about how you can combine them together, as well as how you can use them um, with team reports and things like that. And then we'll wrap up our time today talking a little bit more about the resources that are available for each of these assessments and the certification process if you're interested in becoming certified. So at any point, if you have questions, please either jot them down, post them in the chat, or I will pause occasionally and ask for questions if you've got them too. And at any point, if there's anything that we can do to support you at Assessments 24 by 7, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. All right, so the title of our, our time today is the five core assessments expanding self-awareness beyond DISC. As I said, I know that most of you are quite familiar with DISC, and it's wonderful to be able to understand our observable behavior and the tendencies that go along with that. But there is so much more that we can dive into in terms of self-awareness beyond just observable behavior. So what I'm gonna do is show you the five different core assessments that we offer. We'll talk briefly about each one. Our first is DISC, which you're very comfortable with. We're gonna look at why the core assessments support one another so well, how we can bring DISC into other realms of our effectiveness. Um, we're gonna explore how DISC applies and what's behind it in terms of the other assessments that we offer. So DISC, as you know, is observable behavior and emotion. Another core assessment that we offer is the motivators. And the motivators assessment brings into play more information about the value system and belief system of an individual that impacts and influence their behavior that we see in the DISC assessment. So if you have both of those things, you get, again, a more complex and comprehensive picture of why people do the things that they do, not just the what. We also have the Hartman Value Profile, which looks at our thinking style. And our thinking is the basis of where all of our decisions and behaviors come from. So what we think influences um, all of our decisions and all of our behaviors. And when we filter that through our value system, we can get a clear perspective of what we anticipate will happen with behavior. So these three work exceptionally well together. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into my combo reports later on. But this particular profile, the Hartman Value Profile, looks at our thinking styles and examines our preferences and our biases and our clarity of understanding. The next is emotional intelligence, and it looks at our emotions and the ways specifically that emotions impact our intrapersonal relationships and our interpersonal relationships. This assessment is all about self-management and self-recognition and social management and social recognition. So it gives us some really key insight into the ways that we manage our emotions 
and work within and establish and understand our own emotions as well as how we do those things with others and how we um, impact relationships based on our emotional understandings of the people that we're working with. Lastly, we have the learning styles assessment. And learning styles gives us insight into the different ways in which we understand and learn. It doesn't do just the traditional VAK. Most people, when they think of learning styles, think of visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. And while that is included in the learning styles assessment, it is not the only element that we look at. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. These five together represent our core assessment. And they can create a powerful, robust self-awareness pathway with different resources to support growth and development, both personally and professionally. One of the things that I love about all five of these reports is that they provide unique perspectives through comprehensive yet simple, practical, and applicable reporting. And each of them always comes with unmatched admin instructional support, trainer resources, excellent customer service from my company, and intensive certification programs if you find that you want to master the content and have additional resources for exceptional trainings, workshops, and debriefs. So let's talk a little bit about why you would use these assessments. So the benefits and values of having the core assessments in conjunction with one another is that you have a holistic experience, a holistic insight into what drives a person's success or influences their challenges or causes limitations. You'll see at the top here, DISC reveals observable behavior tendencies. It shows us how we behave. If we look at motivators, it reveals our values and our drivers. It gives us the why behind what we do and how we behave. HVP gives us thinking preferences, so it's the what. It's what do I think about that influences why I do things and then results in the how of DISC. EIQ reveals emotional understanding of intra and interpersonal relationships. As I said before, we look at What's my emotional understanding? How do I manage my emotions? And then also, what's my understanding of my social relationships through the emotions that I experience there, and how can I also manage those relationships through emotion more effectively? And lastly, learning styles reveals how we attain, connect with, recall, and apply knowledge. And again, it's more than just the traditional VAK. What are some benefits? of having these assessments in your tool belt? Well, the first is the more assessments you offer, the greater insight and tools for your clients. And this is true for you too. If you want to use these resources to get greater insight and have greater tools for yourself, we absolutely recommend that too. In addition to greater insight and tools, you can have greater growth. So if you have more at your disposal, you're able to take steps to grow even more so, uh, developing in all sorts of ways in your personal and professional life and reaching your maximum effectiveness and success. Greater growth means you receive more value. So the more um, value that you have based on the things that you're interacting with, the uh, better that is for your business. If you've got more things to offer and you can see the value and your customers and clients can see the value, you can grow your business even more. I'm going to pause here before diving into each of the assessments a little bit more and ask if there are any questions. Okay, we'll continue forward. If you have questions, please put them in the chat or let us know. All right, so DISC. As I said, I'm pretty sure everyone on this call is familiar with DISC. You know how this works. DISC is the world's number one behavioral profiling tool. And we are not the only person that offers it or the only company that offers it. There are lots of versions of DISC out there in the world. It is a very well-known and widely used tool. It gives us insight into how a person will behave in a role or situation and a lot of details about the way they express their behavior. And that's shared with us through a couple of different analyses. The first is of our natural and adapted behavioral styles. And you can see here that it measures those in our blend of dominance, influence, steadiness, and conscientiousness. It's a comprehensive but simple, practical, and applicable resource to identify our style, to show us how to adapt behavior, and to help us communicate to be as effective as possible. Through a complete evaluation of the behavioral styles, we can see someone's behavioral blend. We can teach them and encourage them how to identify other styles. 
and then learn to be more adaptable in communication. We can also look at things like managing energy as effectively as possible, leveraging strengths while limiting risks of challenges. Through this examination of tendencies, we can see an individual's DIS and C behaviors. We can identify their fears, and we can find immediately applicable ways to build stronger communication. In addition to all of the things that are available in this report, it's also helpful to know that DISC comes in different versions. We have a DISC self, which gives you personal insight that can be applied in different areas of your life. We also have DISC sales, DISC leadership, DISC, DISC coaching, and DISC service. And we just very recently also brought out a DISC 360. So now you have the ability to gain observer data in response to your own self-data as well. So all of those things can be used in conjunction to create a really powerful look at someone's observable behavior. Let's talk a little bit about motivators. So motivators is the perfect companion to DISC because it gives us the why behind what we do. It's the value system or belief system, the things that impact and influence the ways in which we behave. As you'll see on the second bullet point here, motivators guide and filter our decisions. So when we make a decision, we put it through our value system, and we determine if that decision is going to get the results that we want. And depending on how strong we are in the motivational factors, we may behave in certain ways to ensure that our behavior gets the result that we're looking for. Motivators is analyzed by seven dimensions, the aesthetic, economic, individualistic, political, altruistic, regulatory, and theoretical. And each of these dimensions, just like with DISC, have a polarized system to them. So the high side of these motivators is going to be the opposite of the low side. And when we look at the descriptors for each of these different areas, we look at them for distinguishing their, their attributes individually, but we also look at them as a holistic expression of motivation. So while we evaluate the seven of them individually for distinguishing characteristics, the power comes in looking at the whole picture. Once we have the whole picture, we can likely predict how a person will behave and respond based on the things that are important to them, their value system. So again, a perfect companion to DISC. When you use motivators, you can guess on a person's behavior based on the things that are important to them. When you use just DISC, you can guess what likely motivates them by the ways they behave. When you have both together, you get a much clearer picture and a much greater sense of how this person shows up and why, which is incredibly powerful. So through a thorough and detailed explanation of the motivators, we can see how their values impact their decisions and behavior. Not only do you get a for specific information for the individual, you also can see the combined perspective of how each of these dimensions impacts one another. You can also say, see things like conflicting and supporting values and how they align with behavior, which can reveal either resonance and synergy or tension and stress. So this can be a really powerful tool in addition to DISC. Okay, I'm gonna pause here and see, Eve, do we have any questions yet? All right, uh, we'll plow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no uh, question. Sorry, I, I was okay, nope. I was not muted, so. <laughs> no worries. All right, let's look at the next one. So Hartman Value Profile, this is our thinking styles assessment. Uh, this is the third tool in our core assessment. It's essential, in my opinion, in understanding our critical thinking and decision making. So if you take another step back from DISC to motivators, one step more um, inside, one step deeper, is our thinking style. And our thinking style is our preference, our biases, our level of understanding. It gives us insight into our problem-solving skills and our judgment. In the assessment of HVP, we look at thinking styles through two different areas, the world dimension and the self dimension. And in each of those dimensions, we look at clarity, how well we understand the dimension and the impact our decisions have on it. 
and attention or bias, how much importance we place on that dimension. And then we evaluate our critical thinking and decision-making ability and skill through those two areas in three additional subcategories. The subcategories are listed here under the third bullet point. Empathy, practical judgment, and systems judgment are all related to our world dimension. And it looks at how we interact with people, how we interact with tasks and results, and how we interact with procedures and structure. So you'll start to see patterns in that and our motivators and our disc behaviors as well. So that's the world style. In the self style, we have the same three um, expressions, three subcategories in self-esteem, role awareness, and self-direction. And self-esteem looks at the ways in which we interact with our own value. Role awareness looks at how we understand the jobs and the roles that we have. And self-direction looks at how connected we are to our future. So each of these things can give us a pretty intense look at what decisions we make and why we make them, even in terms of things that are done unconsciously. Why is it that we decide to move one way or another? Why is it that we put more attention into this dimension versus this dimension? And so this gives us a lot of insight into what's going on in our brain and the decisions that we make. It also gives us an opportunity to look at how do these things play together? And within each of these assessments, you'll also see specific scoring statements for your results in these six areas, and it will talk very specifically about how that impacts your decision. Now, as it says in the last bullet point here, when used with DISC and motivators, HVP can help predict how a person will make the decisions, what will happen when they filter those decisions, and then ultimately how they'll re behave and respond in a variety of situations. So those three assessments come together in what we call the executive summary, which gives you a very comprehensive and robust look at someone's thinking, belief system, and behaviors. HVP on its own as a standalone assessment also comes in an HVP self, an HVP for sales, and an HVP for leadership. So you also have some other iterations for the Hartman value profile. Okay, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is one of the assessments that is absolutely growing in interest in the industry. People are very excited about seeing emotional intelligence, and there's lots of different ways that emotional intelligence is expressed and understood. And so I've outlined on our slide here the ways in which we look at emotional intelligence, and I'll tell you that the resources associated with our emotional intelligence um, assessment are unbelievable. So another important perspective is revealing how our current understanding of ourselves and our understanding of others influences our success and effectiveness. EIQ2 brings about our own emotional awareness and how we manage it and our awareness and management of relationships. As it says in the third bullet point, our EIQ is examined through self-recognition and management and social recognition and management. And we provide detailed scores in those four areas in 20 subcategories. There are five subcategories in each of those four areas. And when you have 20 subcategories of scoring, that gives you very specific insight into where areas of EIQ may need some development. As it says in the last bullet point here, when used in combination with DISC, we can see how the behavioral style tendencies are impacted or have influence over those 20 subcategories. So I'm gonna read through these subcategories for you very quickly. And I just want you to pay attention to the kinds of things that are actually measured and scored within emotional intelligence that can be really helpful in understanding where someone is coming from and where they are living and also how that influences and impacts their social relationships. The 20 subcategories are self-awareness and understanding, connections of cause and effect, self-appreciation and confidence, consciousness and assertiveness, emotional identification, empathy, sensitivity, and appreciation, service, compassion, benevolence, holistic communication, situational perceptual awareness, interpersonal development, self-control and discipline, goal-directed performance and targeted action, integrity and trustworthiness, motivation, 
positive psychology and initiative, creativity, agility, flexibility, and adaptability, developing relationships and getting along with others, leadership and influence, change catalyst and response, negotiation and conflict management, and teamwork and collaboration. And as I said, each of those subcategories receives its own scoring and a specific statement set that is actionable, that reveals to the individual if they are low, medium, or high in terms of these different categories so that they can dive in very pinpointedly to start to develop their emotional intelligence in places that they may not be as strong as they wish they were. In case you can't tell, I really like the emotional intelligence assessment in addition to the other three so far. All right, our last core assessment is learning styles. And learning styles is an incredible assessment that gives complete insight into how we learn. As I've said several times, it's not the traditional VAK, though that is part of it. Instead, our learning styles assessment looks at how we attend to, how we translate, how we relate, and how we understand learning, as well as our effective learning cycle. So I'm going to dive in just a second to give you some insight into these four areas of attending, translating, relating, and understanding so you know what's included. For each of these areas, again, you have specific scoring and statement sets that give insight into someone's learning process. So when we're looking at attending, we're looking at the individual's motivation to learn as well as their level of commitment and the ability to concentrate when new information is presented. And attending is shared in two different subscales, telescopic attending and wide-angled attending. And depending on your ability to focus and the motivation to learn, you may be aware of other things around you in your learning process, or you may be very focused on what it is that you're doing here. So it gives you some insight into telescopic versus wide-angled. When it comes to translating, we're looking at who the individual relies on in managing the transfer of learning. And this is made in, or just shared rather in three different ways, dependent, collaborative, and autonomous. Dependent means I rely on you to give me information. Collaborative is I want to learn in a group. I want to do it together. And autonomous is I prefer to learn on my own. So depending on who we rely on to get that information and make sense of it, we can get greater understanding into how we accept new information and see it and hear it and sense it. The third step of this one is relating. It looks at how the individuals take data or the perception of that information and relate it or link it to existing knowledge. It's the creating new space to be able to connect with this. And this is where visual, auditory, and kinesthetic come in. So in this relating component, we look at how do you visually, auditorily, and kinesthetically connect with the data to make it meaningful in your current knowledge base. Lastly, with understanding, we look at your preference for synthesizing, storing, and pulling up information. So it covers things like a global analysis, or an analytical perspective where we look at the big picture, innovation, broad stroke versus the detailed orientation where we need to understand the ins and outs of how it works. It also looks at how we file that information away and then how we bring it back to the surface when it's time for us to leverage it. In the learning cycle, we look at how those four things come together to create your own understanding and acceptance of this new information as well as what to do with it going forward and if it's something that becomes actionable. So we can start to identify as someone is learning, are there areas where they need to have additional insight or where that awareness can support them in generating a different understanding if they didn't have this information before. The last bullet point on my slide here says that learning styles and DISC come together to give additional insight into our interactions with information problems, tasks, people, tastes, and procedures. So we bring them together to start to look at where do we align our behavior with our learning and how does that impact our ability to be successful. Okay, I'm gonna pause here again now that we've talked about the five core assessments and I've given you a little bit of information about each and see if we have any questions about that 
so far. Uh, no, Jennifer, it seems like everybody's following along. Well, I don't see any questions yet come on through. So we're good. All right. Thank, thank you so much. Okay, so the next thing that I want to look at and give you some insight into is the combination of these reports that we have available. So as I said, if you can bring more assessments, you can bring more value. More value means that people see the benefit much greater and that can grow our businesses. So in these um, listings on my screen right now, you can see where we offer the reports in combination with one another. So DISC and Motivators, DISC and EIQ, DISC and Learning Styles, and the Executive Summary. And again, the executive summary is DISC Motivators and HVP all together. Now, you can use these as individual assessments, and that's fine. But you can also use them in combination with others. So you can see here under the DISC and Motivators headline, we've got DISC Leadership, DISC Sales, DISC Service, and DISC Coaching mixed with Motivators. Under so DISC and EIQ, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, there was a question that came in, Jennifer, and um, before we got too off topic, I just wanted to refer to it. It's from Liz Abel, and she's asking, what's the percentage of usage if you were to look at all five core assessments? So in other words, do coaches find one or more assessments more useful than others? That's a great question, Liz. So in the historical <laughs> Um, data that we have compiled so far, DISC is our number one selling assessment. Always has been. It's the foundation of the assessments that we've used. The core assessments have, have only been around uh, within the last year to have all five of them. So DISC and Motivators is becoming very popular. DISC and Emotional Intelligence is also very popular. DISC is by far the thing that's used the most, but Motivators and, and Emotional Intelligence are right behind it. Probably the ones that we see the least use of are Hartman Value Profile and Learning Styles. Learning Styles because there's a little bit more limited understanding of how that applies for different organizations and individuals, so there just hasn't been a lot of interaction with that yet. And Hartman Value Profile because that's our newest report. We've only had that one available uh, since the beginning of March, I believe. And so there just hasn't been a lot of opportunity to use it yet, but they are all very, very powerful. My favorite combination is the executive summary, the behavior, values, and thinking all together, DISC, motivators, and Hartman value profile. But I also really love emotional intelligence. Learning styles brings about a different perspective that we just, like I said, haven't seen a lot of tie for yet. But I absolutely see the value in helping people understand how they take in information and use it. So I hope that answers your question. No, Jennifer, can I hop in? This is Tony. Hi, Tony. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to say that uh, by far, I believe that the DISC and the motivators together by far are most often used. Uh, and I think it goes back to what you said earlier, Jennifer, and that is DISC is, uh, describes what people do, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, how people do things and motivators why people do things. So uh, uh, that's why we've developed a lot of the materials, uh, more of the combination reports there. However, uh, the DISC, the motivators, and the Hartman together uh, are starting to catch up, especially with the executive summary, and we are uh, in beta testing uh, yet another report that uh, has all three disk motivators and Hartman, just takes a little different uh, approach uh, than what the executive summary does. So uh, I would say, uh, Liz, uh, in, in answer to your question, by far disk and motivators, however, uh, we just did a new uh, DISC and EIQ2 uh, that Jennifer had a big hand in putting together. And I think you could, we're, we're starting to see more and more people uh, use that. So anyway, that's my two cents. Back to you, Jennifer. Thanks, Tony. Um, I also see that we have a question from Steve about the languages. And German and Portuguese are the most interested. Steve, I'm, I'm happy to send you the list of the different languages that we have for different assessments. Not all of them have been translated yet. 
Um, I know that we do have DISC in German. I'm pretty sure, Tony, do we have it in Portuguese? Is that one on the list? Yeah, we have, you're talking about DISC? Yep. Yeah, no, we have DISC in uh, both Portuguese, the uh, Brazil Portuguese and the Portugal Portuguese, yes. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. So I'm happy to send you the list, Steve, if that's something that you'd like to see what the other assessments are that have been translated. Um, but yes, we do have them offered in other languages as well. All right, so then the other thing that I want you to see, you're welcome. The other thing that I want you to see in regard to what's available through these reports is that we also offer team reports that cover additional information for different assessments. So I'm going to fly this up here. Our team reports are things like the team dynamics, so how the different individuals on a team can work together, integrated behaviors, how they interact based on their disc style tendencies in 12 specific areas, um, group graphs, which will show you side by side what their graphs look like and how they compare, the team wheel, which will plot everybody all together so that you can see where does our group align with one another, where might we have differences in style or similarities in style, and the DISC collaboration report, which is the one-on-one -on -one comparison where you can take two DISC profiles, set them side by side, and get insight into the relationship of the two individuals. We are working on building these same kinds of tools for all five of our core assessments. So those are in development at this time, but we do have them available for DISC right now. And probably the best thing to know about them is they are all free. So once someone has taken a DISC assessment, you are able to pull any of these reports for them through your admin account with no additional cost. Now, as I said before, keep in mind that all these different iterations of DISC that you see on my screen right now, leadership, sales, service, and coaching, they all start with the consistent DISC self tool. So it's the basic DISC um, report at the beginning, and then each of them has a specific appendix that's associated with leadership, sales, service, and coaching that provides additional insight with how to interact with the results that you have and the different styles based on whatever the specific arena is that you're dancing in. All right, in addition to combination reports, there are also some resources that we offer to support you. Each of these assessments comes with instructional support from me and my team, as well as a resource site to support you in mastering the content and giving trainings, workshops, and debriefs. We offer both non-certified and certified resources. So you do not have to be a certified practitioner to have access to the resources or to be able to use these assessments effectively. There are resources to support you either way. However, if you want to become certified, you get access to even more resources to support you, as well as some additional benefits of going through the certification process, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Either way, whether you are certified or not certified, the resources that are available to you can be customized to fit the needs of your clients and your training or coaching sessions. So you have this list of things available to support you in each of these different core assessments. Trainer and presenter resources, PowerPoint presentation and facilitator guides in multiple lengths, debrief guides, training resources, activities for classes, background materials, videos, webinars, audio files, even things like an email series that you can use for follow-up once you've completed working with the assessment itself to keep the learning fresh for the people that you're interacting with. All right, let's talk a little bit about certifications. Certifications are not required. However, we absolutely recommend it. And not only do we absolutely recommend it because that is the majority of what I do and I want to be able to work with each of you, but because there is so much that can be learned with each of these certifications and it gives you the opportunity to create a unique, unique expertise with a broad professional application. We talk about how to use it, what you can be um, looking out for in terms of pitfalls, best practices for being able to engage with the material, how to coach, how to train, how to provide insight for. 
you get to do all of that in a comprehensive detailed training and have one-on-one -on -one coaching support. You can ask questions, you can bring reports to the table and ask for insight. It is based around whatever learning you need. They're not cookie cutter online classes. They're flexible trainings that are designed to cover what you need to know, but also tailored to your specific needs and to your development. You'll have access to additional training and learning resources beyond what a non-certified practitioner would have. You'll also receive placements on our certified practitioner directory site, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. And it has by location, by country, by city, by state, by entity, <laughs> a list of certified practitioners, the programs that they're certified in, and a contact link. So if someone is looking for a practitioner to support them, they can find you on our certified practitioner directory site. Furthermore, we recently have gone through the process of having all of our certifications now available for continuing education credits with SHRM, HRCI, ATD, and ICS. And we're working on expanding our continuing education credits into a variety of others as well. So all of these things are really good reasons why certification is such an amazing thing to be involved in, aside from the fact that you get to work with me. All right, I will pause here again and see if we have any additional questions or Tony, if you have anything that you would like to add. I think you've done an exceptional job, so uh, I wish I could add something, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a question I see from Debbie. Are there yearly certification requirements? Nope, Debbie, we don't have yearly certification requirements. Once you've completed the certification process, we make sure that you have access to the resources to support you, which we are regularly updating with new, greater, more wonderful, more supportive things. Um, anything that we create or learn about that would support you is added to your DISC trainer or your HVP trainer or your EIQ trainer or your um, LS trainer materials so that you have access to them. Um, you also will get all sorts of um, email information that tells you latest and greatest, gives you updates, and gives you additional insight into what's going on in terms of certification and ways that you can expand your knowledge and continue to grow. But there are no yearly requirements to continue to um, complete as you go forward. All right, I guess there's no other. Doesn't look like there's any other questions. Angie, do you have any on your end there? Oh, I see another question from Liz about pricing on the certification. Liz, um, I would recommend that you send an email to the website email or the email address rather on the top of the for more information contact us support at assessments.ws, and Matt can get you the correct pricing for the certification. You are also welcome to visit our website, which is there at the bottom, www.assessments24x7.com, to see what the certifications are all about, what goes into each of the process. Um, yes, they are different for each assessment. The process is very similar, but there are different learning requirements for each. And I think that's all of our questions, Tony. Okay. Well, if, uh, if that's the end, let's uh, give it back to Angie to uh, close it off. We're waiting for Angie. <laughs> it's actually Eve. Eve, are you on mute? <laughs> We've lost her. Well, I guess we'll close it, Tony. So uh, <laughs> thank you for coming today. If there's anything that we can do to answer questions for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, as Eve said at the beginning of the call, I know she'll have this recording available so that you can access it later on. If you have any additional questions, please let us know. Thanks for coming today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye.